Chicago. Nope. I'm not talking about the crime in Chicago today. I'm talking about the $4.7 billion that they're going to use in order to build the new Bears Stadium. That's a lot of money. I mean, I know inflation is up. I know the value of the dollar is wrong. I know the value of the dollar is wrong. I know inflation is up. But let me tell you something. $4.7 billion for a losing football team. But they can't afford to lose the football team. They can't afford to lose the football team. What's up, Mika? They can't afford to lose the football team. And they are in a major uh, metropolitan area. But. We're going to talk about this $4.7 billion Chicago Bears Stadium. We're going to tell you where the funding is coming from, and then we want to get the sentiment for the people as far as how they feel about it, all right? Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Shout out to Jay Hustle. I'm definitely going to read that shortly. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. $4.7 billion Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears say they are staying in Chicago. Team leaders unveiling a plan to build a $3.2 billion dome stadium next to Soldier Field. And they say it's not just Bears fans who will benefit. CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey has the much anticipated details from Soldier Field. We learned the Chicago Bears would be able to continue playing here during the construction of that new stadium. Today, the Bears spent a long time rationalizing and explaining that shocking price tag, which they say allows for economic participation for the entire city. Here's the first look at the new lakefront stadium that the Chicago Bears would like to call home. As Chicago Bears president Kevin Warren explained. Is that columns like it's the Coliseum? This is my first time seeing it, so I'm looking at it for the first time, and I'm just trying to take it all in. Who designed this? Who designed this, y'all? Is that like Rome columns? Now, I do agree that if you're going to have a football field, especially in a um, colder climate such as the Windy City, uh, you got to have a dome. Like, y'all out there playing in the cold, that's for the birds. That is for the birds. So the weather don't be good enough for y'all to be playing out there um, in the wintertime in Soldier's Field. But, yeah, this is pretty interesting. This is not an easy project. But Chicago doesn't like it easy. It also won't be cheap. The Chicago <laughs> what? But Chicago doesn't like it easy. Is that y'all slogan? Honestly. Is that y'all is that y'all slogan? This is not gonna be an easy project, but Chicago don't like it easy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, y'all need some speech writers. Something, bro. Something happening over in Chicago. I don't know what the heck is going on, man. Y'all are going crazy. This is not going to be an easy project, but Chicago doesn't like it easy. What? What are you saying? What are you talking about? This sounds so stupid. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Let me let me let me watch the rest of this. I'm taking it all in, just like you guys are taking it in. All right. It also won't be cheap. The Chicago Bears plan to privately invest more than $2 billion of the $3.2 billion needed to build a fully enclosed stadium that will be built just to the south of Soldier Field. Soldier Field's historic colonnades will remain, outlining a huge publicly accessible recreational space alongside the replacement stadium. One of the biggest private investments into a public-owned facility in the state's history. The Bears are also seeking $900 million in public funding through the mm. Illinois Sports Facilities Authority. Mayor Brandon Johnson. It is an honor to be here to celebrate the Bears' commitment to remaining the Chicago Bears. Says it's worth the price tag because of the projected $8 billion economic impact on the region, including about 43,000 construction jobs and 4,200 new annual jobs to the Chicagoland area and a massive infrastructure investment. 
When asked about the challenges from the city's lakefront protection ordinance, which prohibits further private development east of DuSable Lakeshore Drive, he didn't seem concerned. I'm fully confident that um, it works within the, the confines um, of the ordinance. And the Bears are still the largest landowner in Arlington Heights, but Chicago Bears President Kevin Warren says their sights are now firmly set on Chicago. So how does this plan become a reality? We will have more on next steps coming up at five on CBS2. Before I give my thoughts, let me get the sentiment from the people about how they feel about the Chicago Bears and the public funding that's going into building this new stadium. And WGN's Dana Revit continues our team coverage live along the Chicago River. How are fans reacting to the news, Dana? Well, many of them actually say they would like to see the Bears stay on the lakefront, but the uh, consensus is they do not feel the public should be on the hook for such a large chunk of this project. I'm super excited. I'm just hoping that we actually, you know what I'm saying, do what we're supposed to do, you know, go all the way to a championship. So I'm so You can forget it, buddy. Listen, y'all going to get a new stadium. It's going to be a nice new look. Y'all going to be able to walk around and all of that. But as far as winning, you know the Chicago Bears ain't winning nothing. <laughs> Listen, bro, if, you, if you're looking at it from a sports perspective, then you're going to be disappointed. If you're looking at it from an economic activity perspective, we can have that conversation. Let's continue. Super excited, of course. I think it's going to be awesome. On the eve of the NFL draft, Chicago Bears fans reacting to the team's new plans. To it look kind of good, though. I mean, it looks sweet. That stadium, that dome stadium, it looks sweet. It, it looked like they letting in natural light. That's going to be an engineering marvel. They got a lot of work cut out for them. It's a lot of money, but it looks kind of sweet. I, I can't even front. I'm not going to cap. It looked kind of good. A domed stadium on the lakefront. I think it should stay here, yeah. I just feel like in the heart of the city, this is the best place for it. Arlington is not Chicago, in my opinion. I mean, it is, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's not like the downtown area of Chicago. So I think down here in the city would just be better for everybody, in my opinion. Improvements to the museum campus would come from the public. While the exact funding structure isn't clear to taxpayers yet, Bears fans have mixed feelings on the ask. It seems pretty inevitable at this point. I, I just I expected it. Lose a good chunk of my income every year. And Am I surprised? No. Am I disappointed? Yes. I mean, nothing surprises me anymore with what they do with these taxes. But yeah, is it fair? Absolutely not. On whether fans prefer this lakefront plan compared to a move to Arlington Heights, most want the team to stay here, but they aren't sure that's what will really happen. If they took it to Arlington Heights, the one plus would be the saving the traffic down here a bit. That would be kind of nice. But uh, I don't know. It just feels like such a such an important vital part of the city that uh, it'd be a shame to lose it. I actually think it's a negotiating ploy. I'll be stunned. First of all, if the city would come up with that kind of money. And second of all, I think the Bears really want their own campus. They want to own the land. They want to put up hotels. They want to do all that stuff. So I think they're bluffing. So with all of this back and forth between the lakefront, Arlington Heights, Bears fans say they are not holding their breath and they don't uh, aren't going to believe this until it's a done deal. So Bears fans don't even believe, even after this announcement, that they're actually still going to keep the, the team within city limits. You got to keep y'all team. You have to keep y'all team. Here in Detroit, most of our teams outside of the Detroit Red Wings uh, used to be in the surrounding suburbs. The Detroit Lions was in the Pontiac Silverdome, which I personally explored it before. They tore it down and then made it an Amazon warehouse facility. Uh, the Pistons was in the Palace of Auburn Hills. They wasn't in Detroit. And now we got all of our teams. We got the Tigers. We have the Red Wings. We got the Pistons. And we got the Lions, literally, all less than a few blocks away from each other, all within city limits. And it's created a an economic impact that cannot be you can't really put it into words, the, the level of economic impact and how it drives revenue and how it's continued to revitalize the city along with all of the other jobs, the redoing of the buildings, moving of Quicken Homes downtown and all of that stuff. So, yeah, y'all got to keep y'all team. Detroit teams are horrible. You sure about that? Our football team is better than y'all's. Stop. Just stop. 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 Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Okay. 
But uh, congratulations. I'm trying to give y'all some credit. I'm trying not to go in on y'all trash, trash bears. I'm trying not to go in on them, but y'all forcing me. Please don't force my hand. Don't force my hand. I'm trying to give y'all some good news, but y'all don't want to do it. All right, but like I was saying, the economic impact of needing this, and a lot of people will say, well, no, we don't want to use our tax dollars for it. Well, let me give Chicago some credit if they do keep the team within the city. What happens is, better way to explain this is what happened when LeBron James left Cleveland the first time. The economic impact that was felt as a result of, that, of him leaving was crazy. Jobs lost, bars closed, downtown didn't have as much activity, people wasn't spending money. And so in order to drive that investment, you need people to spend money within the city. Because it's not just the Bears. It's not just, oh my God, we got to contribute in some, to, to the pot in order for the Bears to stay here. You got to think about the economic activity, the jobs, the restaurants, the small businesses, all of the funding that it generates for the city. And so you have to keep your team within city limits it's a smart move. You got to give whoever it is that's a part of this, Brandon Johnson, if they decide to stay in, you got to give them some credit. When you incentivize economic activity, it's like investing. It's the public's way of investing into their own future so that the taxpayers can then benefit long term within the city of Chicago. So it's going to be a good, it's a good move.